the Lord. Praise Jesus. The Lord is good. All the time. The Lord is good. All the time. I welcome you here today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, wherever we are, I want us to bow our heads and let's thank God for what he has been doing since the first day of this program, praying for our children. Since the first day, second, today is the third. Let's just thank God for his faithfulness, his loving kindness. Let's thank him because it can only be him for sustaining us, for giving you the zeal, the strength to pray. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. God, I thank you. Thank him for life, for granting you worthy to be alive today. It's not by power. It's not by might. Let's thank God. Let's thank him for his grace. Let us thank him for his mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. He said his compassion, they fail not. Let us thank God because he can only be God. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. El Shaddai, King of glory. We adore you. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In about a minute or less, I want us to just come into this program and to the hands of God. I want us to just... I want us to just commit to this program, to the ends of God. I want us to tell God to speak to us. Lord, speak to me. Jesus, speak to me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. In the name of Jesus, through this program, Lord, touch my child. Touch my children. Touch my child. Touch my children. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord of Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, as we know, the theme of the program is we are praying for our children. We are praying for our children. It is prayers for our children. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse 3, it says children are the heritage of God's kingdom. Children are the heritage of God's kingdom. What does that mean? What is the meaning of heritage? I just want to, I'll take, you know, some few minutes to explain some deep things to us before we go into prayers. What is the meaning of heritage? Heritage means a special somebody something meant for inheritance that is what it means children are heritage of god note the bible never said they are heritage from god it said they are heritage of god so it's children are still god's own property god's own property and if you read your bible carefully there are several places in the bible where god himself was addressing adult as children so the children of israel the bible could have just said israelite the bible could have just said uh, this one but it said children 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 see joel chapter 1 verse 3 it says tell it to your children so your children can tell it to children children and your children children can tell it to children 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 to come you see, one of the major advantage I have as a child growing up is the kind of background I grew up in. A very solid background. That's why even when temptations came for me to do some certain things, but because of the kind of background, because of what my parent told me, I couldn't do it. Let me cite an example. One day in my house, we were doing um, a morning devotion. 
while we were doing the morning devotion, uh, my father opened one very unpopular place in the Bible. I was discussing about the children of uh, Rekha, the Rechabite. And he told them not to drink. He told them not to drink. He said their father told them not to drink. Even when Isaiah the prophet brought wine, the Rechabite said, no, our father told us that we and our children and generations to come must not drink wine. They are akin to the voice of their father. The Bible says uh, the Lord spoke to Isaiah and told him, okay, go back and tell them. Because they are akin to the voice of their father. He said, this place I will give to them for inheritance. He said, their children shall not. He blessings upon blessings. My father opened that place to me in the Bible and, and urged us. I was, I was still young then and he told us, he said, see, please you guys should not drink. He said, since I was born, did you see me with alcohol? He said, no. Said, no. Don't drink. Don't get me wrong. I'm not castigating those who drink and all. I'm just using my own life as an example. But be because of that place he read in the Bible and that instruction, that is what has been with me till this date. Anytime, oh, um, maybe by my friend and they bring a call, and, ah, that word of my father comes, don't drink. Immediately, I don't drink. See, as parents, you will agree with me that we've done things in the past that we are not proud of. See, if a survey should go out and they ask our parents today that, okay, would you love to live the kind of life your child, uh, your parent live? Most of our parents will say no. Because why we've done some things in the past we are not proud of. The Bible says, I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children and children, children. Sometimes when your children or your child misbehaves, it's not because, it's not because of um, maybe just any how this thing. The Bible says the Lord is a jealous God visiting the iniquity. It is very important as parents that you always pray for your child. Bless your child in the morning. When your child does something wrong, don't be too quick to say you are mad, you are stupid. Those are big words that a parent should never say to the child. That action is bad, that action is stupid. It's better than saying you are mad, you are stupid. And with time, the child grows up. The time the child grows up, those things start affecting the child. You are mad, you are mad, you are mad. See, let me tell you, there are some invisible forces and some environmental powers that their job, the only job they have, is just to hold on to something. Hold on. The Bible says the devil, uh, I, I forgot the way yeah, the Bible puts it, but always has a leg ground on Christians. If there is no leg, the Bible says, cause, cause, let's not stand. So for a cause to stand, that means there is a cause. That means there's something the devil is holding on to. You need to be careful the kind of things you say to your child. You need to be careful. The, I've seen, you see, let me cite an example. And again, I want to make you understand that your biological child is not just your own child. Either. Everybody older than your child, especially those who are old enough to be your child's father or mother, they need to be respected also. I'll cite an example. When I was in school, I was in high school. Uh, there was this growing up in Africa, you know, um, who gets spanked a lot. So there was this young man, this young boy, you know, where, you know, quite young then, he misbehaved and um, he, they wanted to spank him. He did something bad and they wanted to spank him. And he stood against the teacher and told the teacher, never, I would not allow you to spank me. In Africa, that is considered to be an insult. A very very big disrespect on the part of the teacher and the student very big respect uh, disrespect he stood and said no you cannot flow the teacher said no I am your teacher you are my student I will spank you for this nonsense you've done the moment the teacher took the cane of the guy took the cane and you know he started wrestling with his teacher he started wrestling with his teacher he started wrestling with his teacher <laughs> I can tell you till date that act 
a lot of you might say, how do I know? I'll tell you now. The teacher placed a very big course on the child till date. It's been how many years? Decades. Till date. That guy is so useless. So useless from that day on. The life of that child has been so useless. The truth of the matter is train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Some of the things that is stopping you and I from doing, from dipping our hands in things that are not good is because of the kind of upbringing we had. Kind of training, you know that if you do it, your parents will be proud. Even though you are grown enough, you are big enough now that you are not under anyone. You are not subjected to anyone. No one is really, really monitoring you like that. But then, you still, that your mind, your conscience, which is the voice of the spirit, is not allowing you to do some certain things. Why is it so? Why? Because of the upbringing you had. That same upbringing, pass it on to your child. Pray for them. Every morning, wake up, look at your child with a big smile. Lay your hands on them. Pray for them. Tell them, it shall be well with you. May you live long on earth. Pray for them. Open the word of God. Always teach them. One of a ver one very good passage of the Bible to teach a child while growing up is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Say, children, obey your parent in the Lord for this is right. I remember, let me cite an example. Growing up as a child, I was um, very stubborn as a child. I was so stubborn, especially to my mom. I was extremely stubborn. And uh, one day, I uh, had always known Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 1 to 3. I've, I've always known the book of Ephesians because I was stubborn. But then, you know, as a stubborn child, you really don't remember some things. Stubbornness is a spirit. The Bible says the sin of stubbornness is the same as witchcraft. It's a spirit, a very deadly spirit. One day, one man called me, he's a pastor, and he called me and he said, young man, come, have a seat, I sat down. And he opened that same place in the Bible and read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, don't know that father and their mother, for this is the first commandment, we promise, then the promise was it, that thy day may be long on earth. I thought that was it. The man said, okay, you know what, let us read that verse. The, uh, the passage again in reverse. So he said, children, don't obey your parents in the Lord. That is wrong. Don't honor your father and your mother, for that is not the first commandment. So if you do these things, your days will not be long. That thing touched me. You see, I've been reading it the normal way, but he read it in the reverse. He said, okay, if you don't honor your ma father and mother, then your days may not be long, but if you do, your days may be long. Then I sat down one day, I looked, I said, ah, it's in the Bible. I looked at it, I, I pondered upon it. That was when my stubbornness started reducing. Sometimes the things you tell a child grows up with that child, grows up with the child. You need to be very, very careful what you tell a child growing up. You and I, we know that as a child growing up, there are some things that was done to you five, uh, when you were five, six, seven, till date you still remember. Why do you think you still remember today? A child's brain develops with time and it sticks. At that point, a child, a child doesn't really have anything that he or she is thinking of, you know, I just want to go out to play with my friends and no problem. They have no problem at all. So anything you tell them tends to stick, unlike adults. You tell an adult something that he might easily forget because, you know, maybe he has a wife or he, she has a husband, children, work, different things they are thinking. A child's brain is not like that. It develops and, you know, there's really nothing worrying the mind or the brain. Be careful what you tell a child. Be careful. And I want to talk specifically now to fathers. If you're a father or you're married, you have a husband. I want you to pass this message to him. It's very important. As a father, you have to be a priesthood. You have to be a priest in your house. You see, priesthood is not something you buy. It's something you develop with time. As a father, you have to be a priest. 
you can wake up one night when your wife is sleeping, when your children are sleeping. As a priest in the house, you wake up. Lay your hands on your children, on your wife. Wake up at night. Start speaking in tongues. Start praying. When your wife wants to join, tell her, say, honey, don't worry, don't join. This is just the priest moment. This is just me. I married you. You didn't marry. I, mar I married you to take care of you and to protect you. This is part of the protection. As a priest, you have a responsibility. You see, I've heard people tell, say, I, I, I'm the head of the family, I'm the man of this house. It is not a matter of just saying it with the mouth. It is more of the action. What exactly have you done? What exactly are you doing as a priest? Let me tell you one very deep secret. Let me tell you one deep secret. Some of the things you do today, in fact, children learn more by, you know, uh, emulating you, uh, looking at what you do, and they do it after you. They learn faster than you telling them. If you tell your child, don't smoke, and they see you smoking, <laughs> It's not gonna work if you tell your child don't drink and they always see you drinking how then do you think they are daft they are not they grow up with these things they are not they are not they are not daft in any way let me tell you growing up i know my father to always um uh do this thing uh they call quiet time uh you know after our morning devotion and all he goes all of us, we've all prayed and sang and everything, but he goes quietly and sits. And you just see him start shaking his head, praying. You won't hear what he's saying, but he's praying. It will be there 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. Ah! I was a child growing up day after day. I saw him. You know, he would just be, he would just be doing like this, shaking. I'm like... This thing is doing, what exactly is he saying? I don't know. Growing up as a child, one day I decided that, you know what, I'm going to try this also. And yes, I did. Even though I didn't know what I was saying, but I did. I learned from him. And when I grew up to a particular point, a stage, when I was a certain age, I understood some of these things he was doing. He, he having quiet time, he would pray. There are times, as a father especially, the priest of that home, you need a personal time with God. Number one is that quiet time. Number two are times where you wake up and just pray. Your wife wants to join you. Say, honey, don't worry. Don't You don't have to stress yourself. This is a priest time. Sleep. I married you as a protector. I married you to protect you in this house. Sleep. Relax. Don't stress yourself. There are some times like that. But what do we have in this generation? Fathers that just sleep. In fact, most times it's the mother that, honey, honey, you are late for work before you start rushing. Take responsibility. Be deliberate. There are some things you cannot do in this life until you are deliberate. I've discovered that there are some places you cannot go, you cannot get to in this life until you are deliberate, until that power is given unto you. Learn to pray for your children. Learn to pray for them. 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 Pray for them. Because when they grow up, when they grow up, that is the step they want. So let me cite an example. So growing up, I used to know my father to go to mountains and pray. I grew up knowing him going from one mountain to another. Almost every weekend, he got to that point. Almost every weekend, he goes and, you know, he prays every time. I really didn't understand. I was age seven, I think, when he first carried me to the mountain. I, I saw the way they were brassy. When I was 10 years, I went there. When I was 12 years, I went there again. Uh, uh, he, me and my brother went there. You know, he told one of his um, uh, pastors to take us there, and we went there. That was the first and last time he ever took me there. I cultivated that habit of going to the mountain to pray. At some point in my life, there is no month 
that will pass without me going to the mountain. If I got to a point when I started working, when I collect my salary, there's a way I divide the salary. When I take out this, take out that, I keep some money for me to go to the mountain. To seek the face of God. To seek the face of God. You know why? Because I was taught from a tender age. It's not that my father sat me down, sat down, and I sat down and he said, yeah, you have to always go to the mountain. He never did that. Not for once. I saw him did it. I saw him, he went to the mountain. I loved it. And I continued. I took it from there. I started going. And I can tell you, my life has never remained the same. I've had series of encounters. Why? Because of what my parents did and I saw them do. I emulated that and I started doing. What will you teach your child? You are going to club every night. You are always drinking and smoking. At your leisure time, you can't even pick a book and read. You can't. What then are you teaching your child? It is easy to tell your child, sit down. But you are standing. If you tell your child, sit, and you are sitting, your child tends to obey. Your child tends to sit. That is how children are wired. Master Beloved, I pray that you will not miss it. I pray this day that your children will not miss it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to just take time to pray. The few minutes we have, I just want us to close our eyes wherever we are. I want us to pray. I want us to pray two sets of prayer. The first one is for yourself and the second one is for your children. I want you to talk to God that God, I have missed it in so many ways. Please have mercy. It's, the Bible says the children God has given to you are for inheritance. They are heritage of God's kingdom. Master Hikaba is going to ask you, how did you train that child? He's going to ask you, the child he has given to you, the Bible made us understand that the heritage of God, that means the children are of God, they are God's children. He gave you, you are just like a caretaker, he's still the landlord. He's going to ask you. I want you to talk to God where you are, that Lord, I've missed it. I've not been living up to expectation. I've actually not been living up to expectation. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me, O oh God. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Lord, have mercy on me, O oh God. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Some of the things your children are suffering today is because of what you have done, because of the bad decisions you've taken in the past. The Bible says the father has eaten sour grape, but the teeth of the children are set on edge. It is not the uh, children that ate the sour grape, but it is the children that's paying the consequences of, of what you did. Some of you have done some things that are now telling on the life of the children. Some of you have made some very wrong financial decision that your family today is reaping your own consequences of sin. They are reaping the bad decision you sold because of you. I want you to talk to God. Say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God. Jesus, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I've not been living up to expectation. Have mercy. I've been so irresponsible. You see, the last person to lie to will be God. He knows you in and out. Be vulnerable before him. Tell him you've missed it in all ways. Tell him you've been so foolish. Don't be proud in his presence. He knows you. He can see your heart. Master, he can tell you how Leke telebosh, leke branda kasin de haka de lebosh, malike de hazi da ha bosko halikaba, rakada den de lebosh otori, ma zinda katili haka te lebosh, ma handa kazike te le katalike bosh, menda kazinda haka hinda hikabash, leke telebosh, leke branda kazenda hikatalaba, rikanda kizinda lebosho kotuliaba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name of prayer. I want us to take this second one. That Lord, give me the grace and the strength. The grace and the strength to live up to expectation. To be there for my children. To train them in the way of the Lord. The Bible says, train up your child. In the way he should go. 
in that way of the Lord he should go. So that when he's old, he or she will not depart from it. Train your child. Say, God, that grace, that strength I need in all ramifications of life to train up my child in the way she grow. Father, give unto me. Lord, give unto me, Holy Spirit. Give unto me, Father. I come before you, Jesus. Give unto me, Father. That strength, that grace in all ramifications, financially, physically, maritally, academically, in all ramifications of life. Give unto me, Father. Give unto me, Jesus. The strength, Father, to live up to expectation. The strength to be a good father to my children. The strength to be a good husband to my wife. The strength to be a good wife to my husband. The strength to be a good mother to my children. Lord, grant unto me. Lord, I come to you in my most vulnerable state. Lord, I humble myself. Bible says, if my people who are called by my name could humble themselves and pray unto God, they say, I, I, the Lord, we hear them. We forgive them of their sin and we heal their land. He's ready and always ready. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to pray now for the children. I want you to pray for your children. See, the truth is, no one can pray for your children the way you will pray for them. No man, no one, everyone will look at your child and say, Hey, baby, God bless you. Ah, look at this child. You will make it. Nobody can pray for your child the way you will pray for them. You will pray for them from your heart, from the depth of your heart. I've seen mothers give up their life for their child. Nobody outside will be able to do that except you. I want you to pray for your child before you sleep. Pray for your child. Say, Lord, have mercy on my children. Bless them mightily, Lord. They shall live up to expectation, Lord. They shall not depart from the way of the Lord. They shall not depart from the way of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for my children. It shall be well with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my children, Lord. They shall live long on earth. In the name of Jesus, their destiny they shall not be cut short. In the mighty name of Jesus, Kazende Ketelebosh, Makatalekebosh Otolikaba, Rakatalekebosh, Lehanda Kebosh Otoliba, Manda Katelebosh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why we're praying? The Lord took me somewhere. You see, uh, it's very important you train your children the right way. Very, very important you train your children in the right way. Look at Elisha the prophet. He was going on his own. A gentle prophet going on his own. And some children just came out and started abusing him, insulting him, calling him bad man. Go up. He was climbing the mountain. And they were, de- they were crying. They were abusing him. Now look at that bad man. He's going up. He's going up the mountain. He had the Bible made of the, Elisha's hair, head was bad. He, the man made us on it and they were abusing him. That was the end of those children. Train your child. You see, some people will just say, oh, well, since they didn't train them, well, let me go. You don't know who your child has spoken to. And sometimes it is not entirely the child's fault. It's the parent's fault because you never taught that child from home. They went, they abused the prophet of God and that was the end of their life. The Bible says, and the bear came out from nowhere and devoured all of them. God never, never asked Elisha. As a matter of fact, it was justified. Justifiable. They they spoke against the prophet of God. The prophet was angry and he devoured them. Be careful, be careful. The only thing just brought that to me. You need to train your child. Tell them to breathe you their tongue. It's not everywhere they go, they must talk. There's a time to be silent. There's a time to talk. Not every time they need to talk. Learn that. Teach them that. Not every time. Even though there's that opportunity for them to talk, 
be careful and what they say matters we live in a society today where what you say could actually determine your future what comes out of your mouth what i have in fact recently i saw a guy tweeted he tweeted that stopped many many years ago almost a decade today that thing he just typed on the internet is telling on his life and his future his generation be careful be careful some of you are too quick to speak to man of god to men of god some of you are too quick to pull them down be careful we live in a world if you want to uh, correct someone correct them the right way teach your child that that there's a time to be silent and there's a time to talk even god there was a time he was silent if you read the book of lamentation carefully there were times where god was silent jeremiah said i called upon god but he answered me not he said nothing he said nothing read lamentation chapter one chapter two and when you get to chapter three he said it is of the lost mercy that we are not consumed even though god never spoke there were times where people sought the face of god and never saw him there's a time to be silent there's a time to be silent be careful what you say be careful what you do be careful be careful be careful God, we bless all everybody in the name of Jesus. As we round up, I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. King of glory, we worship you today. We thank you for your mighty hands. We thank you, Father, because you never disappoint. We thank you for the lives you've touched. Lord, we say be the exalted in the name of Jesus. I use this opportunity, Lord, to pray for every child out there. To pray for every struggling child out there. Lord, I pray that you touch them mightily in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of stubbornness and disobedience in the life of any child. The Bible says, The stranger shall hear my voice and they shall run out of their hidden places. Those spirits are strangers. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever I bound here on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever I lose here on earth shall be lost in heaven. He said, Makahinda kabosh to hikaba. Lift up your heads, O ye gate, and ye be lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts, the Lord strong, mighty in battle, is the King of Glory. I decree now in the name of Jesus. Those spirit of stubbornness in the life of those church come out in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, And Daniel excelled among his peers because an excellent spirit was upon him. Excellent spirit like that of Daniel. I pray it unto your children in the name of Jesus. Their destiny shall not be cut short. Their lives shall not be cut short. They shall not bring disgrace to your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Tomorrow is another day. I uh, would love to see your faces also. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord of Lord. Thank you, Shet of Days. I can see some of you actually asked some questions um, who answered them accordingly. Someone said, what you say can determine your future. Exactly. What you say can determine your future. The Bible made us understand that it gave us a choice. The power of the tongue. He said there's power in the tongue. Life and death is in the tongue. He said, but choose ye the life that ye may live. God bless you, everyone. If you have any question or anything, if you need prayers, you can send them across. And God bless you. I hope to see you again tomorrow. God bless you. And have an amazing day. Thank you very much.